Hylia peperomioides. Am I right? Even though it is one of the most classic houseplants in our community, it can be pretty sensitive as well. I have a few pieces of evidence right here. Or maybe this. Or this. Or this. Don't we all want that lush and healthy, picture-perfect houseplant? Well, the reality is often very different. We've got yellowing leaves followed by browning leaves and in turn a bare stem. I love this plant, but I do struggle with it a lot. Green form, mojito, sugar or splash variegation alike. To understand why my palia looks so sad, I had to do a little bit of research. Originating from the tropical to subtropical zones of Yunnan and Sichuan in the southwest of China, it usually grows in altitudes between 1,500 and 3,000 meters above sea level. It usually grows in shaded forests on moist rocks. The region experiences a monsoon season from May to October and a dry season from November to April with steady temperatures of 16 to 25 degrees Celsius. Now this information helped me to deduct the perfect conditions for my pilea. It actually likes high humidity, warmth and moderate lighting year round, write it down. It needs an airy substrate, yet it should be accustomed to drier periods as well, which is probably why it makes for such a good houseplant. Now what are the options if you want to obtain the perfect pilea? Number one, be attentive. Alternating between over and under watering can cause yellowing leaves and root rot which can kill the plant in the long run. Considering the perfect soil mix will definitely help with this issue, chunky, airy and well draining. If you live somewhere where you experience a winter season, my palias usually shed all of their bottom leaves in winter time. Now having read all of that stuff, this might be caused by the change in temperatures or the daylight hours. Number two, create the best possible environment. Now knowing all of the conditions the pilea is native to, you can maybe adjust your home environment a little bit, up the temperature, especially in winter, this can be a cause of a lot of problems. And if you cannot provide enough daylight, then maybe put it under a grow light and help it out that way. The trick I like to use to provide extra airiness in the soil is to use terracotta pots. This works really well for me. And if all of the above fails for some mysterious reason, because we are only human, then don't worry. You can still save it with the CRR method. What is that? CRR stands for cut, reroot and replant. Easy as that. I resorted to this method many times already and I have a few examples here today from all of these stages of the CRR process. I also need to prune back some of the pileas that aren't looking too hot. First up I have two plants with the splash variegation here. I think this is my favorite variegation type on pilea. Previously I was keeping it in a rather dark spot and it got really etiolated, the stem grew really tall and it also lost a lot of leaves on the bottom so now it's just looking weird. So this would be a perfect candidate to chop and prop and then replant later on. The other plant is a perfect specimen to show you what underwatering can do to a plant. When I touch those leaves, I can already feel how empty they are. They feel very light. They are not plump at all. So this plant really needs a watering. Just pop them off. Number one is done. Let's move on with this poor little pilea splash. The top growth under my grow light is starting to look very compact, but I unfortunately fucked up in the bottom. <coughs> Pileas can be propagated in different ways. Either you take the pups and separate them from the mother plant. You can also take single leaf cuttings, but there's one important thing. You have to take a piece of the stem with the leaf, otherwise it's not going to work. 
I will make a small incision down here. You can see the brown part of the stem is still on the leaves. If I water propagate this, it will grow new pups from down here. I will just chop down here, root the bottom part of the stem and then replant it into a new pot. And just like that, we got our top cutting and you can keep it as a whole. You don't need to cut it any further. This will definitely work. Now we got the single leaf cutting with a piece of stem, our top cutting, and then we got the mother plant left over, which is basically just a piece of stem. And this stem will reroot into a full new plant again, possibly even multiple ones. As I said, I have done this to my pileas multiple times already, so I have a few examples right here. You can still see the old piece of stem, it's a little wobbly or dried up, but there is new growth from the bottom one. This little specimen is extra cute, this little pilea mojito has a little tiny baby shoot on the stem and then we have this bigger one already regrowing. I just want to take a moment and highlight the gorgeous variegation on the mojito pileas, but it's very unstable in more mature plants. It starts to fade into a darker green and it's not so well visible anymore. So enjoy it while it lasts. For the top cutting, I am going to pop it into water and just wait for some roots. In the meantime, I have already prepared a little something right here. I've got three Pilea splash propagations here and then one mojito variegated one. But you can see it on this old propagation. It's very faded, it's very dark green and I don't know what it is. The roots on these cuttings look excellent in my opinion. I think this is enough to put them up. You have to be a little bit careful because the roots are very fragile and thin. That's also why they are a little bit more prone to root rot. I will bury the whole brown part of the stem in the soil. I think I want to start with these two little babies right here. Give them something to drink and then put them into my grow shelf. I think I want to put the two mojito plants back into one pot. I'm not intending to sell one of these, so I just want to make it more lush. And to follow my own advice, I will be using terracotta for this one. I only have the Pilea sugar left. This one I already replanted once. It is growing really compact now. The only issue is whenever you see your plant having warped leaves, then it's usually a sign it's getting too much light. This is definitely a grow light issue and not a plant issue itself. So this one I want to keep as is and quite honestly the sugar variegation is my least favorite of the bunch. I don't like the variegation pattern very much. I might give this one away. Lastly, I have my big green form Pilea. And this one is my favorite because it grew really well for a while. Now I'm not really up to watering sometimes, so it loses a few leaves here and there. At winter to the mix and it's a few more leaves here and there since i keep it on an overhang on my plant card i actually don't mind if it's a little bald in the back because the front is the eye catcher anyway this plant is a great example why keeping the pups in the pot is a great method to hide the balding stem because look at this up to here it's completely bald. And I'm done! And this is usually how I fix up my plants whenever I f*** it up. <laughs> if you're unhappy with how your plant grows, then propagate it, start over again and try to learn something new and do it better next time. And the next time and the next time and the next time if necessary. Now I have a final question for you. 
which is how do you typically fix up your paellas or other plants? Let me know down in the comments. Let's chat. And if your paella is spotless, then please let us in on your secrets. Drop your temperature, humidity and soil mix down below. Thank you. <laughs> Now, if you caught the propagation bug, then this playlist might be just the right thing for you. I'll see you next time. Until then, enjoy your plants and goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. See you next time. Love you. Bye.